Now, the next thing that we have to cover the next atmospheric phenomena or weather phenomena or meteorological phenomena, you can say that is the solar radiation. So, the characters of the solar radiation or characters of the light of the sun that we have to study. So, remember that there is a fact here that you have to remember on the earth surface, which kind of light. So solar radiation is made up of the multiple electromagnetic radiation, multiple wavelengths electromagnetic radiation. So that particular wavelengths contribute to whole solar radiation or whole electromagnetic radiation. So out of that all types, which one is reaching at earth surface in highest amount? So the sun's radiation also having the ultraviolet radiation that is also having the visible light that is also having the infrared. So these all are the different types of electromagnetic radiation you can find out in the sun's light. And out of these different types, which one is reaching to the earth surface in highest amount? So the highest amount reaching to the earth surface is actually visible for now being forget that. The question is based on that which type of light is mostly emitted by the earth or uh, sun. So here the most radiation or radiated type of electromagnetic radiation by the Sun is infrared, which is reaching to the earth, that is 52 to 54 percent. Then second is the visible light, which is contributing around 46 to 48 percent. And the least amount of radiation that you can find out in the sunlight is the UV radiation, that is 6 to 10 percent among the all 100 percent of solar radiation. If you look at the sun's electromagnetic radiation, here you can see that only 7% or 10% is ultraviolet radiation. And this is in the wavelength of 0 0.4 micrometers, or you can say 400 nanometers also. So this is the range 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. So basically, at 200 you can also take. 200 to 400 is the range of this UV radiation. Then after that, we have the visible light range. Visible light range, you can see that this is the highest intensity you can find out in the visible light. The highest intensity means that highest amount of light that you can see, that is the visible light. We can only see in this particular range. We cannot see the UV light. We cannot see the infrared light. But infrared light is also contributing a big amount here, you can see, because the range of this infrared is very large 37 percent of the solar radiation is near infrared and 11 percent of the solar radiation is far infrared and the visible light contributing around 44 percent of the total light so if you add these two near infrared plus far infrared 37 plus 11 so almost around around 48 50 percent highest amount of the radiation you can find out on the sun's light the highest intensity would be of the visible light Second infrared, third UV. So if it is asking about the intensity, go with the visible light. If it is asking about the amount, so that would be highest in the case of infrared only. Here, 0 0.4 to 0 0.7. This is also called as par light. Or you can say this is photosynthetic active radiation light. Only this amount of radiation can be used as a source for photosynthesis, energy source for the photosynthesis. So this is also called as par light, 0 0.4 to 0 0.7. More precisely, uh, 0 0.38 to 0 0.72 you can take. Then after that, so here you can see this is with your. So out of these all seven lights, violet and indigo and blue is having least amount of wavelength and highest amount of wavelength you can find in the case of red light. And after red, it means infrared. So after red, what is there that is far from red? So in far from red. So that is, it is coming infrared. Similarly, you can see near infrared. Then we have far infrared, near to the red band, near infrared, far from the red band. So this is far infrared. And after that, we have the other, uh, our usable, electromagnetic radiation zone like this is used for the microwaves this is used for the tv from 1 to 10 meter 0 0.001 to 1 meter is microwave then 10 meter to 100 meter range is the short radio waves and after am radio waves this is all you can use 
we also have the mobile networks which are in the power or after this am radio waves so that all is not in the sun's radiation but these are also part of the solar radiation electromagnetic radiation we can see so this is all about the solar radiation classification and detail of that now few numerical questions they also ask from the radiation energy so let's look at this particular question at your screen in the case of silicon solar cell example the silicon solar cell production is 1.12 electron volt the maximum wavelength of solar radiation for the production of the electron hole pairs so electron hole pairs means there would be creation of one electron and there is also production of one hole so this electron and holes change their phases due to which electricity is provided so to create one electron hole pair you have to calculate the required amount of wavelength of the sunlight for this particular electron cell which is producing the energy of 1.12 electrovolt now for this the formula you have to use that is the energy of photon is equals to h mu or e is equals to h c by lambda so this is the planck's uh, law you can say so planck told that to all the people the energy of the sunlight traveling through the different packets these packets are called as photons and you can calculate the energy of each packet by the formula of e is equals to h mu mu is the frequency here and we know that the frequency is equals to 1 by lambda or lambda equals to also lambda equals to also 1 by frequency so if you know the electromagnetic radiation wavelength you can calculate the frequency actually this is proportional if you remove this proportion sign then this would be introduction of one constant that is c c is what c is the speed of light the speed of light is fixed that is the left kilometer per second or you can say 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 meter per second because we put values in meter because meter is the si unit so the same formula is used here e is equals to h c by lambda here h is introduced which is called as planck's constant and planck's constant is given by the planck that is 6.6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 34 joule second so if you put all the values planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by wavelength of that light so you can calculate the energy of photons present on that particular light so the energy of each packet of light or each photon you can calculate with the help of this formula the same energy is asked here not energy is asked here energy is provided that is 1.12 electron volt and lambda is asked here wavelength is asked here so you have to just calculate the lambda now there is only one problem in this particular formula that everything you have to put in the form of si unit but okay we have the formula h c by lambda h value we have in the si unit joule second the speed of light uh, value we also have in the si unit that is 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 meter per second but the value which is provided here in the energy 1.12 electron volt electron volt is not si unit you have to convert this electron volt into joule second joule is the right energy unit in the si unit not electron volt so if you convert this electron volt electro volt into joule what do you have to do you have to multiply 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 19 joule so now this electron volt is converted into joule by multiplying 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 19 this is conversion unit so now if you put all the values in this particular formula we need to calculate lambda lambda is asked in the question lambda is equals to h c by lambda so this would be 6.6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 34 multiplied by the speed of light that is 3 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 this all is divided by the energy energy which is provided in the question is 1.12 electron volt to convert it into joule we have to multiply 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 19 joule so now everything is okay you have to solve only this this 19 and 8 would be 27 34 minus 27 the only thing you will left here that would be 10 to the power minus 
and if you solve this 6.6 .6 multiplied by 3 divided by 1.12 multiplied by 1.6 you will get lambda is equals to somewhere 1.14 or 1.1 you can take as well multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7 meter but here the options you can see all is provided in nanometer so to convert this meter into nanometer multiply 10 to the power 9 so the lambda here would be 1.14 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7 multiplied by 10 to the power 9 so 9 minus 7 is 2 left so you have to increase the zeros here this would be not 1.14 you will get 11.14 You can see here 6 multiplied by 3. So 6, 3 is 18, 19. You will get 19 divided by this 1.12 multiplied by 1.6. This is somewhere between 1.5 around. And you will get 11.4 or 11 you can take. So if you multiply this 11.4 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 7 multiplied by 10 to the power 9, you will get the value of lambda somewhere around 1100 or 11. 140 nanometer for the D option is the right option here. But this process is a little bit lengthy. So we have a shortcut also. If you have the value of energy in electrovolt, so already this unit is calculated because this is fixed. This is also fixed. So this is already cancelled and calculated to 1240 electron volt. And also they have multiplied 10 to the power 9 into it. So already the things are provided in this form. So if you want to calculate the energy, what do you have to do? Just you have to remember this value, 1240 electrovolt. Because this is in the electrovolt divided by the energy. Energy which is provided is 1.12. B, this would be lambda. So basically, I have changed the places here. Lambda is going here, and E is coming into this denominator. This would be lambda is equals to 1240 divided by 1.12. This would be somewhere 1100 nanometer. So with this help of formula, you can also calculate the answer. That would be very, very easy to you. But again, I am giving warning to you. You can use this formula only when the values are provided in one point in electrovolt form. So here you can see in the question 1.12 electrovolt, electron volt value is provided. You cannot use this formula when the energy value is not provided in electron volt. If energy is provided in joule, so directly use this formula. If the formula if in the question, the energy is provided in electron volt, go with this formula. And if you are not understanding anything till now, so the one thing only you have to remember is this formula. 1240 divided by lambda. That will give you energy. And if you have energy in the question, so lambda is equals to 1040 divided by lambda, you will get your answer in nanometer directly. So 1240 divided by this 1.12, you will get your 1100 answer. That's all the shortcuts of this particular question. So to this, you can also solve. So I hope this is clear to you now. The next concept that is asked generally in the unit examination, that is the photon concept or photon flux. What is the photon flux? So I have told you that energy according to the Planck travels through the energy packets, different packets. And these packets are called as photons. And every photon or every packet of energy has its own energy. So if you want to calculate the whole energy of the sunlight, First, you have to count the number of photons. So how to calculate the number of photons? So number of photons for any particular area is called as photon flux. So photon flux is what? Photon, photon flux is generally denoted with the help of this sign. That is phi. So this phi is equals to number of photons present in per meter square area in unit second of light coming. So in one second, how much amount of photons are coming in a unit area, one meter square area, that would be called as photon flux. Then how to calculate the intensity or the density of the photons? So the photon power intensity or density is equals to energy of one photon multiplied by the number of photons or photon flux, you can say in what per meter square. 
So that is how you can calculate the photon power intensity or photon power density. So uh, this question you can see in your screen. Solar radiation of average energy 1.25 electrovolt and intensity 500 watt per meter square are incident on the surface of a solar flat plate collector. What is the approximate photon flux density impinging on the surface of the collector that you have to calculate? So you have to calculate this photon flux density or photon flux intensity, which is competing on or impinging on the surface of the collector. So for that, you need energy and you need the photon numbers, photon flux. So let's see how to solve this particular question. So here the formula you have to use is the photon flux density. So photon flux density is equals to power intensity. The power intensity provided in the question, you can see this is the power intensity, 500 watt per meter square divided by the energy. Energy which is provided here in the question is again an electron volt, 1.25 electron volt. And here there is no shortcut. You have to use the conversion factor 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power, power minus 19 to convert this electro volt into joule. So that particular formula I am using here. This is the energy, 1.25 electron volt multiplied by 1.6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 19. Now this is converted into joule. Intensity we have already provided in the question, 500 watt per meter square. So 500 watt per meter square divided by 1.25 multiplied by 1.6 10 to the power minus 19. So now if you solve this, so this 1.25 multiplied by 1.6 is equals to exactly 2. So 500 divided by 2, this would be 250. So 250, I can write down 2.5 and 20, I can increase here from this 10 to the power minus 19. This 10 to the power minus 19 will go into the numerator side and this would be 10 to the power plus 19. So I can change the place in numerator denominator by changing the sign only. So this would be 2.5 multiplied by 10 to the power 21 photons per second per meter square or photon flux density, you can say. This is the answer. You can see the options here in the question as well. 2.5 multiplied by 10 to the power 21 fourth is the right answer. This is how you can solve the question about the photon flux density. Energy or intensity would be same here, that is 500 watt per meter square. This is the intensity or energy, and this is divided by the phi value. Phi we have to calculate, this is divided by the photon power density. That is 1.25, you will get your answer. So this is how you can solve these numerical questions. Let's move ahead now. Uh, one thing that you have to remember, I, I have already told you that intensity of the visible light is highest on the Earth's surface. That's why we can see the visible light more from the infrared or UV. So the intensity would be always higher for the visible than infrared than UV. But if you look at the amount, amount would be highest for infrared than visible than UV. So these two sequences you have to always remember in the case of sun's light. Let's 